Good afternoon from the UK, from Mazart Studio. We're actually battling colds and flus here <laughs> um, in the studio today. Well, actually, all week, we, Gary and I have both been a little bit under the weather, so I do apologise if I'm sounding a little bit nasally. Um, I was absolutely determined to not let this get the better of me, um, and I wanted to make sure we got this lovely Valentine project done in time for Valentine's. But I do sound a little bit, a uh, bit rough. Um, we've got a lovely class here already. Fred's here already, and so is Joy Lynn, and so is the lovely Hazel, of course. Um, and I do believe there are some more sort of sat there watching and keeping quiet in the chat. Um, just so you know, Gary is here with me. I'm going to put your arm at candy camera, Gary. So Gary Hi, is here in the studio with me, along with the two boys as well, um, keeping us all company. Um, they don't like to be without us, to be perfectly honest. They like sitting here. As you can see, they're making themselves nice and cosy. Um, but Gary is here with me in the studio. So if there are any questions during this live show, um, please do feel free to ask him and he will relay those back to me. Dean is here as well. So we've got a nice, we've got a nice, workshop going on like I said I wanted to get this done in time for Valentine despite sounding a little bit like this if anybody's seen the episode of Friends where Phoebe has a, a voice um, you know she's got a cold and she's got a really rough voice and she reckons it makes a sound a little bit more sultry I'm going for that today that's my uh, my attitude I'm going for that <laughs> So this is what we're painting today. I've done the underpainting. And just to be clear as well, because I think a few people have got a little confused, um, the photograph that I'm working for, that is actually a photo. It isn't my painting. Um, obviously, I'm painting this live with you today. Um, but I wanted to put something on there almost as a placeholder so that you knew what we were aiming for. Um, my plan is to try and get as close to that as possible today during this live class. Um, we've got JD here as well. Lovely to have you, JD. It's always nice when you pop on. Uh, and Jamie B as well. So we've got a really nice full class. So without further ado, and also because I'm not sure how long my voice is going to hold out, I'm going to crack on with everything. I've got my palette set up. Now I do, I have included with the free tracing, I have included what I thought we would need. I typically tend to lay all of my paints out like this. Um, I just transfer them over to an airtight container at the end of the day. And I just prefer having access to all of my paints. But if you don't want to do that, I have listed the colours exactly what I think we'll be using. Because obviously I've not painted this. Um, in advance. I'm going to do this live with you guys today um, but I've listed that in the PDF material list that comes free with this workshop as well. Um, but just in case you're wondering why I've got so many colours, this is just how I do it. I just I like to have all the colours. It allows me to make more spontaneous decisions knowing I've got my favourite colours all out on the palette. So um, Right, without, and then the only other thing I've got here, I have some Liquid Original as my medium for today. Um, it's a nice fast drying medium, which is what I wanted for this workshop. Um, but you would also be able to use linseed oil or a walnut oil or something like that. Um, so use whatever you, you know, supplies you have available. Um, I like the Liquid Original. I just like the fact that it's really fast drying. So if I wanted to do any touch-ups tomorrow and really tart this up a little bit, then I would have that opportunity to do that. Right, what I'm going to do, I like to work, and if you've done any lessons with me, you will know this procedure. I like to work on a slightly wet surface. And when we're talking about medium, I always use it sparingly. So don't ever put a lot of medium on. But what I want to do is give myself a little bit of a wet surface, um, an oiling out surface to work into. Um, I do wipe a lot of this off. I put it on and then wipe it off. And of course, because this is a fast drying, even during this live demonstration, this will also start to really tack up and it allows me to add multiple layers even within this sitting. So it's one of the reasons I do like it. I don't particularly like the smell of it. Um, I don't put a lot on um, and I only put a little bit out on my palette as well. 
So I have got a very, very thin layer. And again, that's so the paint goes on just that little bit smoother when you're applying oils, instead of having that drag with that, draw, that dry um, underpainting. Again, it is important that your underpainting is completely dry before you start working on your color layers. So once I've got that on there, I like to take a paper towel and super gently, I'm actually going to wipe off that excess from, it's not showing on the camera, but from where I'm looking, it's got a little bit of a glossy finish. And what I'm looking for is more of an eggshell. Um, you don't want it super matte. We don't want it dry. Um, but I do want it to have a bit of an eggshell um, feel to it. So are we following so far? Bertha's here, Randy's here. Um, so we've got a really nice full class again. Who's actually painting? Who's watching and going to play um, paint on catch up? Let me know and let Gary know so we know where we're all at with everything. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start in my background. I'm actually going to save the rows, I think, till the end. Um, and we'll start working on the background first. So for that, I want to keep it pretty dark. You could use black, but black is a very dead colour. I prefer to use um, ultramarine blue with a mixture of burnt umber. And that will give you an almost black. Now, with that, I might also throw in a little bit of alizarin here and there. And I'm also going to just add a tiny bit more medium um, just to help that paint flow. Gary's asking, he's putting his hand up here, guys, so when he's got a question, uh, yes, go Jamie on. Jamie's just asking a question. Who's on. asking, sorry. Jamie B, yeah. saying, getting horrible headaches, is liquid better than linseed oil? Um, it's a difficult one. Um, to me, liquid's got a stronger smell than linseed oil. Um, so again, it's maybe just try a small container rather than um, go spend a lot of money on it. I know some people are very allergic to liquid. Um, I think Mary Carroll, who is in the US, she's really allergic to it. So it really it's, it's a difficult one for me to, to say. If you are struggling with um, headaches and things, I've been trying the uh, Cobra water mixable paints um, and so far really liking them. And I'm going to bring a little tutorial out soon on YouTube um, of how I've been experiencing them. I'm still very much new to them, and playing around with them. Um, but it is, it is an option. I have found that the paint is very, very lovely, very lush to paint with. Um, so that's definitely something you might want to consider if you're really struggling with um, the mediums. I had to get rid of odourless mineral spirits. I don't use them at all in my studio uh, for that very reason. I couldn't, I was getting too many headaches. Um, so I don't use them at all. I actually clean my brushes with a little bit of the lean painting medium that I use in the early stages of the underpainting. Um, and you can see I've got a tiny amount in there. So all I ever do, and I do have a brush cleaning video, um, I, I literally don't worry about changing the colours between, I don't need to clean the brush super well when I'm changing the colours in between. Um, it's just at the end of the painting and then I use baby oil at the end followed by soap and water. So if you are wondering about brush cleaning without mineral spirits, um, then try that. Then the other thing I would also suggest instead of um, linseed oil, if you're really struggling with the linseed oil, is try walnut oil. Um, I believe a lot of people seem to, I've never used it, but I do believe a lot of people really like that. Um, I'm thinking if you're having trouble with um, linseed, you're quite likely to react to the liquid. It's got a really strong smell. JD says he uses Wilson Bitford's clear glazing medium. Okay. Has no odour and dries fast. Yeah. So there are different options, you know, and people are dropping their versions, um, you know, what other people are using. Um, but I would say if you're struggling with the smells from linseed oil, you're not going to like the liquid. It's got quite a strong smell. I don't, as you can see, I don't put a lot out, so it doesn't really affect me. And I'm in quite a large studio. Um, but if you were working in like a small bedroom area or something, you may struggle with that. 
So I hope that's answered your question. Just to give you a quick demo um, of brush cleaning, all I ever do is I dip into the medium and I just a couple of times I'll do that with that medium and then I'm done for that I really feel like I'm okay to change the color I'll dry that medium out and even though it's not super clean it's clean enough um, certainly for paint switching you'll be very surprised how little paint actually if I go into the red how a little paint actually transfers across even from just dipping in and cleaning your brush that way so it's not clean by no means, but it's clean enough during a painting session. So I hope that makes sense. I don't have mineral spirits at all near me. And I know you've been asking about linseed, but it's all relative, I think. Um, right, okay, so that's the background, nice and simple. If you want at this point, you could throw any other transparent colour in there, for example, a little bit of alizarin, and it, it won't show, on, again, it's not showing on the camera, but you get a little bit of that warmth peeking through, um, sort of once it dries, you just get these lovely little flashes of hints of different colour, and it doesn't look quite so flat. So that's something I will do when I've got a black background like this, is throw in, particularly because we're using some red, so to bring some of that red across and dance that in is quite nice. And that's it for the background, nice and simple. So I'm going to move on now and start working on our books. We actually have quite a complementary scheme here, even though it's not super obvious. Um, but we've got sort of orangey, you know, we've got the red oranges and orange colours around the book area. And then as you look down towards here, we've got blue grey. So we've got a nice complementary scheme going on here. So what I want to do is mix the orange for the base, if you like, for my book. So I'm going to have a starting point. So I'm going to go into some cadmium orange. I'm going to need you to grab me some more paint in a minute as well, Gary, So, because I've definitely not got enough. Now, that straight out of the tube is going to be far too candy-coloured, far too bright, so we need to grey that down. And we tend to grey that. You can mm. use one of the earth tones, but I'm also going to use the complement, which is the blue. So just a tiny amount of the blue compared to the orange will really help grey that orange down. Now that's going to be a starting point from me, for me. But from there, I want to be able to go darker and lighter. If I just jump over to the palette, I like to have that middle point, and then from there, I'm going to start lightening it. In fact, I'm actually going to use a little bit of Naples yellow to begin with. And I get what I call a string, a chain of colour from that point. Now I'm seeing some of that colour and I'm also seeing it go even warmer and lighter. And then I'll pick up some of that white. So we now have a lovely chain of colour from that mid-tone to the, um, the lighter colours. So I'm going to go into that mid -tone. There is some darker colours in there as well. Um, but I'm going to add those as we need to. And really for that I'm just going to go with a little bit of burnt umber. So I'm going to come to the side here with the burnt umber. Let's bring a bit of that orange in. And you can see now, I've also now got a chain going the other way to the burnt umber, to the darker tones. And this is something I do a lot, is that I will start at one point and then move it in different directions um, so that I can always go back to that starting point if I need to. I'm going to start with that darker colour and we will work right in our darker area. I'm going to use my underpainting as a map so you can see where I've got that dark shadow on here. I'm using that dark tone as my guide of where to place that colour. Now for the time being you're just placing colour, don't worry about blending. And it does look a little strange, I'm going to go further up my chain where it's even darker still right underneath the book. And all the way across and of course this shadow we can get a nice strong dark underneath that rose. I 
Now we've got that strong dart directly underneath the rose. If I give my brush a quick wipe and then go down that chain, I can get something that's still a bit darker but not quite as much. So we get that soft transition in shadow colour. And again, you can see where I'm following my underpainting as that map. I, again, that little medium really does help. You've got a tiny amount that's, that's just helping the brush flow a little bit, um, but not so much that you slip sliding everywhere and you've no control. So if you've put too much on and you're sliding everywhere, you'll find that you just don't have the control that you want. Now I'm going to start moving towards that original mid-tone as I'm seeing these. Now again, notice I'm not blending, I'm just placing my colour where it needs to be. I'm using that underpainting as a map. And keeping my brush strokes, one of the things I'm definitely working on is allowing some of my brush marks to show. I'm going to go down that chain again and again place that slightly lighter tone and hopefully you can see the benefits of doing an underpainting, you know, working in that monochromatic undertone and then using that as your map. It really does simplify the whole painting process. So I'm going to keep going across now, following these different tones, but not worrying about blending. We can get the blending in a little while. It's more important that you think about the placement of the correct tones in the correct area. And again, I'm going to, I'm looking at the reference and it's slightly darker at this end. So I'm going to work slightly towards this darker tone. I think that's a good point, you know, because a lot of people, they'll, they'll put paint on and they immediately feel they've got to to blend. blend. Yeah, well, it's thing is, if, if you were working with acrylics, it's completely, it's a different ball game. You do have to kind of blend as you go. Um, but if you're working with oils, you do have that luxury of being able to place your colours. Um, you know, this is, a lot of people, why do you do an underpainting if you're covering it? But hopefully this makes sense that as I'm looking at that, I'm back in my dark, I am only covering and following that original underpainting. So I'm not just covering everything, I'm following my original underpainting as I move across. Mm. And especially if you do this chain of colour thing, it makes it suddenly quite easy to, um, you know, follow those guidelines. So I'm just blocking, this is what I call blocking in. Now we're kind of working almost a la prima on this layer anyway, because sometimes what I will do is I will block in, let it dry, come back and do details. But we're actually going to do details in the same sitting. So I'm blocking in and then coming back to um, do my details. So I'm moving down my chain of colour transitioning out of that mid-tone going into the lights and I'm also I don't know if you can see the brush mark I'm pushing that paint into the weave of the canvas as well to make sure as I'm applying I'm also getting a really good coverage you know rather than just skim over it just work it and get that good coverage at the same time Now I can see it's really light in this corner, so I can come all the way down my chain and get that slightly lighter colour. I'm also, because I'm working the brush into the canvas weave, the paint isn't necessarily going on super thick, which allows me, um, as we progress through the painting, to pop thicker highlights on later on if I need to. So that's the blocking in, very simple, no, no, um, you know, no real major detail there. We'll work on this side as well, again just adjusting as I need to, it's slightly darker at this edge than it is. This is the bit that's catching the light. I'm 
you know for ease I'm going to just bring all that colour across I think back to my darker tone and all I'm doing at the moment I'm not actually even cleaning the brush because these colours are all related all I'm doing between is just giving that brush a wipe so it's quite nice that you end up with that um, you know the, that colour harmony within your painting so again back to my darker tone over here and it does lighten slightly but only a little bit I'm going to pick up a tiny amount of that red. I like to warm the shadows. So we've got a little bit of a warm colour in those shadows. Let's do the top of the book as well. So this is coming along nice and quickly. It's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do the top of the... Um, what I'm trying to do is deal with the background first so we can put the fun details on the top. But I'll use the same colours for the top of the uh, book cover. I think, you know, you're talking through the colour chain theory that you've got on your palette. I think that helps. Yeah, definitely. You know, and it's something, of... that, yeah, it's something I do a lot, you know, especially when you're working with more complicated subjects, like if you're doing a pet portrait, for example. Um, I'm going to change my brush to something a bit smaller. I'm just switching to a smaller filbert, um, but you could just use a small flat as well. Just something a bit smaller while I'm in this smaller area. Um, yeah, if you're working on something a little bit more complicated, um, having that string of colour can really help you. So I've gone a little bit lighter where I'm seeing that light tone. We've got a nice shadow there. I'll come back to that. And that's a cast shadow, so it needs to be just a little bit harder um, to show that it's a cast shadow. Now I'm probably going to change these colours slightly um, once I've actually blocked everything in on the top. Give the brush a quick, quick wipe into the dark for that nice cast shadow and I think what I will do is I will put a little bit of the green in this cast shadow once I've actually once I start working on that leaf just so some of that color is bouncing into the shadow so already you can see it's really effective we've not done any blending at all so I'm really pleased about how this is looking. Um, I'm going to change things. No, I'll keep everything as it is. We'll stick with the same colours, maybe just grey them ever so slightly. So by that, I mean, I'll pick up just a little bit. Let's stay with the small filbert. A little bit more of the blue. And I'll come to the side and kind of just take some of these colours. And just so the, they're still relative but it's just a slightly different hue than what we were doing with this, this one, just so we've got some variety in here. So hopefully that makes sense as I'm doing it. I'm seeing that this bottom book here, and this one here is greyer, the one lower, but I'm seeing this just a little bit cooler in tone than the one above. So it's very similar in colour, but just slightly cooler because we've added a little bit more of that grey. So this is where your complementary colours really work. Because even though there's no blue in it, that blue is really helping grey things down. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit and again I'm going to grey it down, keep that relationship, pick up a little of that blue, I'm back into my shadow colour but I've picked up a little of that blue so I can put that shadow under here and keep that relationship. It is only subtle, hopefully you can see that. If I just 
jump back to my palette. This is the colour we've been using and just adding that tiny amount of blue keeps the relationship but just cools it slightly. So working with sort of warm and cool tones, um, it can really help sort of keep that colour harmony in your painting. I'm going to just dance a little of this in here now so that the top part of this book has got a little, seeing a bit of texture. So I can pat that on there. In fact, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to just bring some of that to the top. Very little paint on here. I'm just trying to create a little texture on those top covers. So they like, look a little bit leathery. I'm going to pop back to this um, shadow that I've missed here as well. Let's bring a bit of that in. We get there eventually. We might miss things, but we get there eventually. And now I'm going to work on this one here. And again, this time we are a lot cooler with this book. Um, it's much more of a blue gray tone. But I still want to keep this relationship. So I'm going to go back into the blue and come to the side here. I'm going to bring some of that orange in as well. But this time it's a much cooler color, a much cool down. But again, because all the tones are relative, there's some of that orange in there. Um, it's giving us a, a really nice, now I'm going to have a look at that. We're definitely going to need to go darker in the edges, but I think that might work for this part here. Maybe bring a little bit of that over here. So I'm just getting that initial lighter tone that I can see and then I'll come back with a dark version and we'll get that in as well. Well, they're, they're all liking it so far. Excellent. And uh, Sue and Rick, they're needing some pink magic gloves. <laughs> it's definitely the pink magic gloves, the gloves that do it. Yes, that definitely, it. definitely. <clears throat> JD's wanting another Careyville course. I know. We've, it's been a while, hasn't it? We've, we're not travelling at the moment because of parents and doggy issues but we will eventually okay so i'm going to go back into this gray color from earlier i'm going to add a little orange to it this is slightly darker now and i'm going to use this for this darker shadowed area that we've got right under here now again i haven't painted this before guys so these are the decisions that i'm making on the spot um, i don't particularly like having to paint something and then redo it which is why we're using the photo um, as the reference for the class because i know somebody's commented saying like that's actually a photo i was like yeah it is a photo the underpainting's not but the reference is a photo because i've not painted it yet um, I used to do and sometimes I do even with the academy I will pre-paint something um, it just depends sometimes I paint with just the music on and then I like it and it becomes a class in which case I've got a reference to use um, but sometimes I just think no that'll make a good class um, and I haven't pre-painted it which is the case today so hopefully you can see that we've got that lovely shadows in there now we've got that lovely warm and cool going on still very much blocking in no detail we're saving all the fun stuff till the very end but i just want to make sure that my edges are soft the join between the light and shadow are nice and soft and then we are back to 
more pages here um, so we're back to these warmer orangey colours so let's go with let's start with something along this lines so again using that chain of colour just really helps you because um, all you have to look at then is your reference and your underpainting and you know roughly where on that scale you're either at the dark end or at the light end and so you can use that to your advantage when you are following this underpainting method it is one of my favorite ways of painting is getting an underpainting and <clears throat> you know me i like to play around with paint and I do all sorts, but I do, if I want to do a commission or something like that, then this is what I tend to fall back on. Gary's putting his hand up again. <laughs> I'm going to put the camera on you when you're doing big, that next Big time. Wigs is saying, let's say you didn't finish this painting, something came up, have to leave it, have to block it in. What medium would you use when you came back to the painting? For me, it? I would stay with the same one um, because I'm putting it on so, so very... Um, thin um, and actually um, liquids classed as a fat medium um, if you if you've watched the underpainting you'll know I've used a lean medium um, and you always want to do that for your underpainting and um, the one I use is the zest it lean but if I was um, you know if I was letting this dry and which I probably will do anyway we're only going to do this as one sitting for today's workshop but my advice for you if you wanted to do a little bit of tarting up once it's dried just reuse the same medium that you've already done keep, just keep that um, but again just put it on super thin like we've done the first time round I use so little that you don't really need to worry too much it's when you put in a ton of thick paint on my paint's very thin and the medium is also going on very very thin so I would use the same one don't go back to a lean definitely don't go doing that but as long as you're staying with the same fat medium throughout you'll be fine right so that's pretty much let me get that let's take a little bit more of our burnt umber and get that nice shadow that we've got here and then we can start doing some fancy stuff so once I've got everything in position what I like to do is I'll look now and see where I can dance a little bit of colour um, you know do, I don't necessarily need to stick to exactly what I've done and when I'm looking at the reference I'm seeing little bits of warmth and little bits of that red so I'm going to go into a tiny amount of my cad red before i start blending i am controlling it it's very little on the brush but here between these two joins i'm almost seeing little hints so i might just brush bits of that on and it's just to add that extra bit of color into your painting i'm seeing it here as well it's usually quite nice to think of it as a marrying tone between your lights and shadows use your finger if you need to And again, if you look, and I like to put a little bit of warmth in shadows as well. So maybe a little bit of that here. And maybe just a hint of some of this nice cad red. It's getting that under colour in there, just bits of colour that help with that glow. Where else do I want it? Especially on this top book, but maybe just a little hint down here as well, just for that continuation. And hopefully you can see it really gives it a nice glow. So what I'm going to do now is with a clean flat, have I got a slightly smaller one? Not to hand. Oh, I have. I'm just switching to a, I've been using a number four and I'm switching to a number two just so I've got a controlled amount but I've got a nice chisel on this brush and what I want to do now is borrow, it's clean, there's no paint on it and we can start borrowing paint from one area to the next so you're taking your lights into your darks and vice versa but creating those pages See how easy that is. 
but just getting a little bit of that detail in there with those little brush strokes. I'll do the same over here as well. And this is why you don't want to be dealing with your candle at this stage. You want to get all that background work done. Again, I'll borrow some of that dark and bring it down here. And I'll borrow some of the light and take it up there. So you're borrowing paint from one area to the next. I'm cutting right into that. Let me give you a slightly different angle. But I am cutting right into that in a back and forth windscreen. I'm not actually taking it off and doing this. I'm windscreen wiping, taking light into dark. And this is such a nice way of creating a little texture. I'll do the same here. Again, borrow the dark into the light and so on and so forth. It's ever so subtle, but that's all you need um, to create the idea of the pages of a book. Again, if you want to, you can always take some of that dark and bring it across. You know, if you feel you're not quite getting the look you want. And that looks effective, doesn't it, Gary? It does, Tony. Yeah, I've made a note of that. But it's, um, you know, just borrow that paint. That's not to say we're, we're done at this stage. And hopefully you can see by placing your colours where we needed to um you know we've we've still preserved that lovely light and shadowed effect i'll do the same on here as well and again i can always come back with some light if i feel like i'm not quite getting there so i've borrowed some of that light and i'll take it over here again i'll take some of that dark and I'll borrow I do this a lot you know borrow paint from one area to the next everybody's gone quiet so they're, all, <laughs> they're obviously taking well that's that good in. and we want to also break those hard shadows up so again this back and forth I need to come in with a bit of shadow on that one let me do that Pick up some of my orange, bring some shadow under here. And again, back to my clean flat and just move that around a little bit. So once I've kind of manipulated that paint, I'm gonna throw a little bit of that cad red here. That shadow looks a little bit dead by bringing a bit of colour to it you just put some life into your shadows okay so once I have manipulated the paint as much as I want I'm going to just start doing a little bit of detailing and for that I'm going to pick up some let's go back to our dark to begin with and a little of that cad red while we're at it. And again, now I can just come in and just start neatening up edges. Let's go with just the burnt umber. Getting a little bit more of that dark in there. I'm gonna go with burnt umber and a little ultramarine blue, which again is gonna give us almost a black. But if I want something a little bit darker and a little bit sharper, so right under here, I want a nice obvious edge between where that book cover ends. And it can be a bit wonky, it's an old book. That's my excuse. I don't know if I told you, but Raccoon Little Bear okay. is, has been with us 
from the start. Oh, wonderful. They can see a face forming on the palette. <laughs> Obviously, you you intend you're atten intending that, aren't you? Doing two paintings at once. Oh right, yeah, of course, yes. <laughs> I thought they meant on their own palette. I was like, oh, that's quite clever. Oh, I <laughs> so again, I'm just looking now where I can put these lovely sharp, and this is the um, shadow as the contact shadow, if you like where the, um, the book is actually sitting on the surface. So we want that to be just a little bit darker. Now we've got those other shadows in place and using a nice sharp chiseled edge brush. And again, here I'm seeing, now I wanna warm that a little, I'm gonna go a bit so I'm jumping either between the blue, leaning the black, this black mixture between burnt umber ultramarine blue. Sometimes you can lean it slightly blue, which work really well here. But then sometimes you can lean it slightly towards the burnt umber, which is better for here. And this is where you just need a nice steady hand. I want to bring that shadow across. I'm seeing that a little bit stronger there. And again, a nice strong dart right underneath here. Now we can further enhance all that by adding a highlight. So I'm cleaning that flat brush and we'll start doing a little bit of highlighting. So I'm going to go back to this section here. Actually, I'm going to stay with this slightly greyed down version. No, I'll stay with this. Ignore that. I'm going to go with this section here and actually increase. There is a bit of um, some of that on my brush as well. So it's slightly more greyer. Again, if I show you that. So I've gone into that and I've just added some more white, but I had a dirty brush, so I already had a little bit of this on. So I've got a lighter, slightly grayed down, light tone. And I'm gonna use that now. Again, I'll test, because I haven't painted it, so I'm not 100% certain if this is gonna be bright enough, and it's not, so I'm gonna go a lot whiter now. And when we come to our highlights, you want to be thicker. So everything has gone on relatively thin. Um, I've got a good coverage, but I've not put a lot of heavy paint. By the time we're on here, you want to be almost scooping and getting a little bit of a ridge for when you're popping on those final highlights. So your highlights go on thicker as a general rule. And I just want to edge some of these books, try and keep a nice steady hand. Which is easier said than done. And then what I want to do, I don't want to leave it as a hard edge like that. I'm going to come in and almost just tickle and blend that in. Again, using that slightly patty stroke, so I'm creating a little bit of that texture. You're going to be much neater than me. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Let me just go and tart that little area up. So this is the nice thing about doing the lives. You actually see me fixing things like here where I've just smudged. I'm just going to go back to my dark tone with a clean brush and just push that back. So I quite like that, that looks quite good doesn't it? Good. Looks nice and effective. Um, a, a new term, have you introduced a new term, a, a patty stroke? A patty stroke, yes, this is my new patty stroke. I'll stay with this nice light colour, it's almost white, it's very greyed down and it's almost white and we'll edge this one here as well.
and again I'm okay with a slightly wobbly book it's one of them lovely soft leather bound ones that are a bit well loved and well worn well read that's my excuse so once I've got that lovely edge we can go back to our patty stroke then don't want a hard edge like that I just want to and I'm going to clean that and again I'm just going to tap and smoosh and soften so I get some nice texture at the same time with my little patty stroke so that outer edge here is nice and hard but this edge going back into the book I'm just smooshing it and softening it down yes sorry go Fred's on Fred's got to go but he's going to be painting this later today all right lovely no so. problem thanks for joining us Fred and hopefully I'll see you on Wednesday for the rose one uh, that we're working on on the academy um, yes you need to do it you need to do it for your missus so Valentine's Day I'm giving you all heads up that you need to get these paintings done as gifts okay so I'm going to do the same now with the top book it's slightly, I'm going to just moving down the scale slightly um, and I'm just going to, here I'm just going to dance a little bit of this light in here. Again, just allowing some of that undercolour to peek through. And again, I am really focusing this year on allowing my brush marks to show, not blending everything to death. Because I do think at one point I might have been the queen of blendy blendy and I don't want to do that I want to try and get away from that and create just a little bit more texture in my paintings so I've got that hard edge and then I'm smooshy patting back and hopefully you can see there's a lot of variety in there because we're leaving those brush marks coming through I'll bring that light and I'm scooping now to get that slight ridge on my brush JD's asked a question, but it's regarding the candle when you get onto it. Yeah. Um, would you like me to ask it now? Yeah, sure. Go for it. He's saying, is, is the candle the primary light source? Uh -huh. or, or is there another light source above um, the candle? The, the very well could be. It's definitely not the primary light source because this you would basically just get all this on this side. So there is a light source coming from here as well. This is giving us a nice pretty glow, um, but it's definitely not the primary light source. I just, you know, I looked at the reference. Um, I think this is an unsplash um, reference photo, which I've included in the in the notes. Um, I just thought it was a really pretty I don't always question where the light's coming from in that sense um, but I wouldn't say it's the primary light source because everything would be super mm. dark we would have a whole we have got shadow on this side but we, we would they're, have way way more shadows yeah, there'd be a lot more shadows yeah um, well it, you'd get that chiaroscuro effect rather than what we've got is much more of an even lighting um, so I'm still saying that there is, this is giving some light over here, but there's also some light almost coming towards the front. If you look at where the light's hitting, here, 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 there's a light source coming from here as well. Um, that's how I'm seeing it anyway. Okay, I'm pretty happy. Let's put a few loose marks in um, on the brush. And again, I'm scooping now. Um, just where we've got this lighter area, I want to put a few loose marks in here. Again, that slightly thicker texture, um, just to enhance that feeling of book pages. Now, don't forget, don't take these bright lights into your shadows. If you want to go with a bit thicker into your shadows, you need to warm that slightly um, and go with something just slightly warmer, still lighter but it's not, you're not, you can't take white into your shadow areas. It just doesn't look right. And again, I'll do the same. Scoop a little of this what's left and just bring it a little bit. Let's put a bit more paint on there, being tight. Just that slightly thicker. And again, keeping that nice brush market effect 
that I'm really trying to work on. And I think we're pretty done there. What do you reckon? I'm going to go to that slightly, we'll put a few here, but not quite as bright. Mm -hmm. Just to give that continuation. Pretty happy with that, Gary. What do you reckon? Yeah. Are we all done? Yeah, right, like okay. They all like it. <laughs> so we'll, um, what we'll do now is we will just start working on our candle. I may need you to just grab me some cadmium orange, Gary. And you want some orange? Yeah, cadmium orange and some cadmium red. I have a feel, and actually the white while you're up. The white's on the surface there. These fellas come in handy. <laughs> I know, I know. Now the candle, again, very much, it doesn't look it, but it's very much blues and oranges. Those are the main primary colours that we're going to use um, to create. That's the one, cadmium orange. Red's so, next to it. So that's your first one. The cadmium red is right next to it, where yeah. you've just been. The long tube, that's the one. Yeah. And then the white's actually on the surface. So, thank you. You mean the one where you've wrung its neck? Yeah, the one where I've wrung its neck. There's mumps still in that. Mumps. <laughs> I don't like to waste paint. No. <laughs> Is anybody else doing that? And I know I said this last month. I'm still a month later. I'm still getting paint out of this tube. I like. I think I'm getting close to the end, but... I do like to make sure I get my money's worth. I'm sure they make them paint, you know, the necks of them paint tubes difficult on purpose to wind us all up. Okay, I'm going to go with, um, so we're going very similar colours. So I'm actually going to just go straight into this mixture, mixture and again, keeping that colour harmony. So I'm going to go into this section here. So we're still in that light but I'm warming it with some of that orange and I'm going to see, let's have a look, let's go with that, I think I'm going to need to lighten it later but let's go with that on this light and again I'm following my reference and like we did with the books I'm going to block in to begin with so we've got that slightly warmer colour Seeing it over here. Now, I will need to lighten this with pure white at some point, but I never want to use all my aces in the early stages. I always want to know that I've got white to be able to go to if I need to. And again, I'm going to take that slightly around the back. And this is where you're allowed to have a, a little bit of a wonky candle as well. Now, I might have been better doing my leaf first, but we're going with it. We're already ahead, so we'll go with it. Now, as we come down, we start, we've got a slightly warmer, so I'm picking up a little more of that orange. And we have a little bit of a warm glow coming through here. And I'm going to add some yellow into that as well. Let's get the orange on to begin with. So this is that halfway, but I'm not going to take it all the way. I lose it around about here. Now I'm going to pick up a little cadmium yellow into this mix. And we've got a bit of a warm glow again almost as a marrying colour let's bring that further down now like we've done before I'm going to start introducing the blue because we start cooling right down so into our blue 
only a tiny bit and it's more of we start graying down our orange tone so we've got our orange and we've got our blue and plenty of white let me go back to that now that's quite dark so I'm going to take this down here get rid of some of that off my brush keep wiping that brush and then I'll go back to our lighter colour and just try and get something in the middle between the grey and the orange so again also working in those puddles I'm not worrying about blending I'm just focusing on colour getting the colour in place as we come here it really starts to cool right down so adding just slightly still light but adding slightly more of the blue so we're getting a slightly more of a blue grey it's really interesting because for a lot of painters we'd be panicking now that we've got too much dark on the candle and trying to blend it out and oops you need to be a little bit straighter than I am obviously and again I'm seeing we've got this bluish colour so I'll stay with the colours and just pick up the hint of blue to keep that cooler tone it's always about playing warm and cool where you possibly can and it just gives a lot more and it looks messy at this point and that's all okay trust me I know a lot of us would be starting to panic at the minute <laughs> does that include you Gary yeah and I think that's where this this blending sort of obsession comes in you know you think oh god I'll, I'll, I'll blend that out well this is a very smooth object anyway so even though I've just said um, I'm trying to um, work on my brush strokes this is a smooth one so this would be where blending really mattered okay so once I've got everything in place we're back to like we did with the books I want to start merging colour and then maybe dancing in some other tones with a nice clean brush but I feel like I've got everything before I blend actually let's work on that top section there so again we've got a grey but it's slightly warmer so I'll go into you using the blue and orange to your advantage at this point got a nice grey tone here but it is a nice warmer grey tone and I'll go back to our light and bring that across okay so everything's in place nice clean brush dry brush as well no medium on here and I'm just gonna where the joins are I'm just gonna focus now on getting a nice smooth transition keep wiping as well you've got that lovely sort of waxy feel I think when you work this way and you've got all those colours working together so I'm constantly wiping that brush I'm really just focusing on the joins so I'm not spreading that yellow too far for example I'm working I'm going to just give you a slightly different and I also don't lift the brush up I'm doing a figure of eight on the join between one tone and the next give the brush a wipe move to the next join 
and that's how you get that lovely smooth transition once you've pretty much done all the work with your brush and you do need to do it with your brush I am going to use a mop to soften and again with this it's more about the work needs to be done with your brush before you switch to this this is more about just finishing those final marks off let me clean my brush and just neaten my candle a little bit back to a little bit of this one now clean brush again I'm going to work on the top I'm going to come back to this at the end I think I'm going to work on the the leaves next before I put the very thick paint on here and now I'm going to go into a little bit of I've switched brushes to a filbert a little bit of cadmium red on that outer edge You know, I may come back and do this after. No, I'll stay with it. We'll stay with it. We'll go with it. A little bit of cadmium orange. Not a lot of paint on here. And I've got that little glow now. Now before I put any thickness in there, I'm going to work on our rose. So it's all about just timing. I know that in order for that to look really bright, I need thick white paint in there and some thick opaque colours. So what I'm going to do now is work on what's behind before final details. So hopefully that makes sense um, in terms of my thought processes. So we will block in our leaf and then do the rows and then we do a final pass over everything so hopefully this is all making sense as I'm going through the whole process and just have a moment to blow my nose <laughs> okay how are we doing Gary is everybody yeah. doing okay now that they like it Dorian okay. says, wow, we got in the candle. It's looking nice, isn't it? I quite like all the the but change most, of colours in there. Mostly, they've been talking about how to get the last bits out of a tube. <laughs> yeah. Into some sap green, I am going to add a little bit of... Let's go with a little yellow ochre into that for something a bit more natural and a tiny amount of burnt sienna. The sap green straight out the tube looks a bit unnatural, but I'm going to go with that for my base dark colour. And I'll use that now. Let's have a look. I'm still going to add a little more burnt sienna to that. It still looks a bit... Um, it's a bit candy coloured out, straight out the tube. And a little more of the yellow ochre. I'm wiping off that excess so I'm controlling how much goes down. Now again, I'd, and I say this a lot to my students, this is a reference photo. I don't have to be a slave to it. I'm not trying to create or recreate this photo in its entirety. So if my green is a little bit different than what I'm seeing, I'm all right with that. Now I'm just focusing at the moment on my darker tones with this initial green and I'm going to switch to my small filbert just so I have a bit more control. So I'm being careful around my little candle. But I do want that nice dark effect. So using my underpainting as my map, I'm going to start adding on those darks.
we're almost creating a little bit of a lost edge here between the value of that background and that leaf. You can barely see where one meets the next. And whilst I'm at it, I'm going to also work on this one. So we're going to take a little bit of our green, I'm going to come to the side and we want to start introducing some of that warmth. So a little bit of our yellow and a little bit of cadmium orange. So we've now got a nice warmer highlight colour which of course this candle is going to be bringing some of that, I'm going to add a bit more of the orange to that, it's going to be bringing some of that lovely warm glow. And again, I'm keeping my brush marks pretty loose with this one. Now on the other side, we're moving away from that light source. So I want to cool it down. So I'm going to go into our blue, come to the side here. I still want it to be quite light. And I'll pick up some of our green. And again, back to, let's lighten with some cadmium yellow. So it's a little bit more of a cooler highlight over on that side. It's, it's not quite as warm as we're moving away from that light source. <coughs> Pardon me. We've both been struggling with this cold all week. There's a lot going around though, isn't there? There's a lot of people. Um, and this is probably the best I've felt all week. Um, but I have noticed a lot. Um, I, I mentioned to my daughter about not coming up today and she says she was gonna cancel it anyway because she wasn't feeling well herself. So um, there is a lot going around, isn't there, with these colds? You were saying your brother had had it as well, weren't you, Gary? Yeah. He struggled for weeks. I know. You're doing well to get through this live painting. Thank you very much, JD. I appreciate it. I was absolutely determined because I wanted this done for Valentine's. Um, if I'd have been, I was pretty rough yesterday. I thought if yesterday I was thinking I'm probably going to end up cancelling. Um, but it's amazing what a little bit of makeup and a shower does <laughs> for a girl. <laughs> I definitely felt better once I'd done that this morning. I have kind of hibernated these last few days. So I've got those base colours in there now. Cleaning the brush, I am just going to make sure that these are sort of blended nicely before I start popping on some extra highlights. I mean, the leaves are not the main focal point, so just remember that as well, that we don't need to be um, making them the focal point. I'm going to switch to a small flat. This is one of the Mazats. It's nice and sharp, um, so it gives me some nice sharp details. I'm going into a little yellow. I'll come to the side here, always relating the colours back to what I've been working on. 
and I'm going to pick up a little, I'll pick up a little bit of the Naples yellow as my opaque highlighter. And we'll get that in there. And again, staying with this colour, I'm going to add a little more orange into that. And I want to pop in some of these little highlights that I'm seeing. Now this is going on much thicker. Again, when you get to your final lights, you can put them on a little bit thicker. And again, I'm going to cool that colour. Let's go with a bit of white to this mixture here. So hopefully you can see I've stayed within that um, area where the cooler blue colours are and just added a little bit of white to that. Scoop that on because it's going to go on thicker and we can pop in some of this cooler lights that I'm seeing. Let's switch to my fill, but I feel like that my brush, bristle brush is a bit too sharp and it's cutting in. And we'll add a little more white to that mixture. Sometimes when you put in these final highlights on, you need a slightly softer brush so it doesn't dig into the paint underneath. It just lays on top. I just want to create a little bit of texture and again I want to keep my brush marks showing. I'll stick with this cooler colour. There's one or two comments about your, um, you know, your stick. Your, You've this got... is cold and easy and I have a link on my um, thing for it. Um, I actually bought it from um, your neck of the woods guys, you know, from America. Um, and it cost quite a bit to ship over, but it's been an absolute godsend for mm -hmm. working. Um, I'm switching now to a liner brush and I'm going to go into a little... Whenever you use the liner brush, you're better with a small amount of medium. And I'm going to use this now just to edge this cool, nice cool colour. You don't want too much medium because you still want your highlights to go on quite thick. But we can edge that leaf there. And a little here as well. I'm changing the colour slightly, leaning slightly warmer to get that edge there. I quite like that. Let's go with a little bit more of these warmer. Shines that I can see, a little bit of shine on there. Sort of light within your lights works doesn't it, it does. pretty good with that right so now should leave that alone now leave it alone well done gary <laughs> i will i will leave it alone i've put my filbert brush down i can't find it there it is yeah i'm quite pleased with that that looks nice now what i wanted to do i'm going to pick up some of this green very little and I do want to brush, if you remember I said I wanted to just bring less than that, a little hint of that inside of this shadow as though it's casting a little bit of that colour into the shadow. And I think that looks really nice. Right now on to our main event, our lovely rose. So on, as a rule you want to look for those three tones. 
I'm going to clean some part. No, I'll be all right. I think I'll work over here. Um, so I want a darker tone, a mid-tone and a highlight. Our highlight is going to be the cadmium red. So everything from there has to be something in between. Our shadow is going to be alizarin crimson. So it's nice and easy in a way. So let's focus on getting our shadow in and I'm going to work in small sections. We will get our shadow in here with that alizarin. So it's a nice rich colour. What I'm going to do to mix the mid-tone is I'm going to take our alizarin and a small amount of our cad red. So I've got something in the middle and save that cadmium red for those final highlights. So once I've got my shadow in, I'm going to place that mid tone right next to it and preserve my highlights. And it may be a little fiddlier when you're working in, it gets easier as you come out. But we do need, certainly in this initial stage, to get those three basic tones in place. I'm going to move out of that now, back to our crimson. Leave the spaces and come to your next shadow part. Work part way up. Give the brush a wipe, move to your mid-tone. See how quickly this is coming together. Mm. I am wiping constantly every time I go back to reload. Don't take your shadow too high in places. You do need that middle colour. White. And again, I'm following my underpainting. As best I can anyway. Back to my crimson. And of course that opaque, thick cadmium red, you, you want to be careful because you want to try and save that as close as you can towards the end because you're going to put that on pretty thick to get your rose to pop. Wipe in, mid-tone. So at the moment, I'm just focusing on my shadows and my mid-tones. Well, JD's commented he loves painting roses. But yes, he does the wet and wet ones. So do you. Yes. But if you love them that much, your roses grow and grow. And... <laughs> I think most people are guilty of that. I think when you've at least drawn it out like this and you've done an underpainting, you're less likely to, for it to, when you do the wet on wet ones, they can, they can get out of hand. I do love the wet on wet flowers. I think they look really delicate and pretty. But there's so many ways to paint. It's, it's just nice to see lots of variety, I think. So again, a nice little shadow there. And back to our middle tone. I don't want to make that mid-tone too light, so just be aware of that. It's almost a 50-50 mix of those colours. I don't want to be competing with that cadmium red by having this mid-tone too light. I love red roses. Well, I, what girl doesn't? My first roses were pink ones. Yeah. In Art Quest, if you remember. With Robert. Robert With Robert, Warren. yeah. Yeah. But of course, 
event, eventually that painting had to be thrown away because you, you thought that my roses looked like a pig's head, was it? <laughs> you did have some piggy effects going on. I think we threw it away. I know. Okay, so again, I'm just taking my time, really thinking about the placement of these lights and darks. Trying to preserve that pop with that cadmium red. Because it's very opaque, it really will pop when we come to do it. And of course our underpainting is also helping with that darkness because it's lovely and dark here. I'm just tinting that underpainting. Not putting a lot of paint on either, really sort of spreading. When we come to do the opaque colours we will put more on. So at the moment now we're coming into the bigger area, I can just concentrate on the shadows. Again, back to our mid-tone. You can see where I'm preserving some of these real pops of light. I'm just tickling that join. I don't want to over blend. I just want to tickle that join between the shadow and that mid-tone. There's a nice little flash of light there. Now they're all being nice and quiet, aren't they, today? Yeah, well, they're, they're riveted, I would think. <laughs> and again, I'm seeing nice pops of light up this end. This is your Valentine card, Gary. I'm just letting you know. Well. Because I've not been shopping. <laughs> I've not been out might, to get it, anything. It could be an improvement on, on the rat one that you did for me. <laughs> I thought that one was adorable. Has anybody ever seen the, um, the Valentine mouse that I did? I think it was last year, a year before, I don't remember. And he, caught, he said, I've given him a love rat. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very cute Valentine card and you didn't appreciate the efforts that I made. So again, just working my way diligently through these lights and darks, trying not to the temptation is to pop loads of that cadmium red on because it's going to give you a really nice wow factor. But you don't want to overdo it. Back to the cherry baitwell scenario. If you think about a cherry baitwell, it's got that lovely red cherry right in the middle of all that white icing. And the reason it stands out is because it's a smaller area on a white area. So if you want something to have an impact, you don't want to overdo it. So I'm still with the mid-tone and those shadows. And we're going for it now. Start getting some of that cadmium. Hayes was impressed with <laughs> right the the rat painting. Oh. 
might have been trying to hint at something there. What, that the, I'm a rat? <laughs> yep. So again, I'm just well, popping actually, these little... he was an adorable mouse, wasn't he? He really? was an adorable mouse. You're the one who chose to see it as a, as a rat. I was quite offended, actually. <clears throat> I did you a lovely Christmas card as well this year. You did, yeah, a lovely Santa. So hopefully you can see what an impact popping those, that pure cadmium red on there. It's such a, a, a powerful colour. I'm going to change my brush in a minute to something a little bit smaller. So I can get into these tiny areas. Well, Ed's come on and said, have you ever completed an underpainting and thought, I like it just like this and left it? I have. I have done that. In particular for demonstrating students. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, to me, they look beautiful on their own. And actually, JD is a master of just doing the monochromatic. Well, just come on and said, I leave many at the underpainting. Yeah, thing. he does. He is a master of doing that. Um, and also, if you've not seen the video I've done on the little girl using raw umber and a linen canvas, because um, I know when I did that, JD absolutely loved it and I knew he would because it's right up his street in terms of, um, yeah, they look beautiful on their own, I think. They really do. They look really lovely. The trouble is, I love the colour as well, so I get to a certain point where I'm just itching to get the colour on. I like doing um, a la prima work as well. I do like painting, you know, wet into wet and, you know, or just toning the canvas and going straight in with colour. I do think it's harder for students, for beginners particularly, to do that because you've got so many decisions to make, you, you're looking at value and colour, um, whereas I think using the underpainting really is brilliant for beginners. Um, it just simplifies the whole process. I'm hoping you're seeing how absolutely lovely that is looking. Um, I'm going to switch to, well, I'll do that little corner first, and then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Now, don't forget, I haven't blended any of this. This is very much like I've been doing all along. We place the colour in to begin with. Don't worry about sort of blending and joining things together. I'm going to switch to... Do, 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 do. What have I got? Let's go with a little round brush. Excuse me a minute. That might work. Let's give it a try. So I've just switched to a small soft round. This is like a, a golden tacklon round brush while I'm working in these smaller areas. So again, think about just placing your colour using your underpainting as your map to get those colour placements in. Looks pretty. It does. I'm still looking at that candle. Well, get everything in place and then we can start popping on those final highlights. And again, we're only doing this as one sitting. If you wanted to, you could let this dry, do the oiling out layer that I did at, right at the start and, and do another layer. And this is something I may do. I, you know, I, I can't say I definitely will. It just depends sometimes when the workshop classes 
I don't always go around and finish them off but then sometimes if I like them I will do that and then pop them in my shop the nice thing for me about um, putting things in my own shop is I do put them at you, you know a lot of people buying prints for more than what I'm charging for original art pieces because of course I'm using them as teaching tools and I would rather people enjoy them you know so I sell them very very cheaply in my shop so if you are interested in some original art do be sure to go and check me out rather than having prints this is coming on, isn't it? It's coming together. Mm -hmm. So again, notice how little in terms of putting that cadmium red, just a little bit in right places is just giving it enough of that light. Well, JD's come on and thanked you for your, your lovely words. Oh, in terms of his portraits. Yeah. You are the master, JD, with, when it comes to the monochromatic portraits. Yeah. If you haven't checked out JD's work, then you really should. Mm. Um, he does some beautiful portraits. He does all his rock star ones and they're absolutely awesome plus he does on the is it the drums jd um let me know is it you paint on the drums and things and guitars he's yeah. done all sorts yeah i think he does yeah, yeah. but he <clears throat> i love i love seeing it i absolutely love i love looking at everybody's work you know for me just i spend a lot of time as you all know i spend a lot of time on my groups chatting to you all yeah, just come on, charcoal on drums. Yeah, it's stunning. Yeah. I do think where, you know, when it comes to the monochromatic um, and leaving them as finished pieces, um, you really are, you really got that nailed. We are getting there. For me, it's all about supporting each other. We all yeah. want something from our art and we all want something out of it. Um, and I do see myself as a teacher first, you know, I do enjoy painting for painting's sake for myself and every now and then I have a little meltdown and think, I'm not filming, I'm not filming, I'm just painting. Um, but I really do enjoy the teaching side of it. It's really, for me, it inspires me. And I often wonder that if I weren't doing the classes and the online classes, you know, would I always have the the motivation to do it? You guys actually really do motivate me to come up with new ideas and things. In particular, when we've had a hard time, and I know a lot of us struggle when, you know, we've gone through sort of loss and things like that. Um, I lost my mum last year. Um, and I'm, honestly, it was you guys kind of being there, I'm getting emotional now, <laughs> um, really kept me going. So, and I'm not sure as I would have been able to pick myself up, but of course I had classes to do. So, you know, it really kind of um, got me inspired again. Mm -hmm. So I'm a great believer in supporting one another. Well, yeah. And JD's come back and said that meeting you in Caryville was a pivotal moment for him Aww. and that you changed his direction in painting that that first time when Aww. he met you in Caryville. So it's so isn't that just amazing? And of course that. Mickey, um, who couldn't be here today, but she was yesterday, she posted that she was painting blooming old, one of my projects, Blooming Old Steps, with her ladies. Um, and I, I, you know, I was feeling grumpy because of this cold. And I, I log on and I see that. And it's uh, honestly, it's just to me, it's wonderful. And I could get very emotional over it. I'm not going to, but I could get super emotional um, how much support you guys have sort of given me. And hopefully I'm giving it back to you. I really do believe in. Um, collaboration rather than competition 
Everybody wants to bring something to the table and that's what we're about. So what I'm doing now, I'm just cleaning, I've, I've wiped the brush, I've not got any paint on here. And all I'm doing now, this is a nice soft brush, is I'm just making sure um, any gaps are filled, like I've just noticed something there. And I'm just tickling any hard joints. I don't necessarily want to remove a ton of my brush marks, but I want to make sure that I've got some nice soft transitions if you like. Certainly with something like this we don't have any hard edges. So it's just the joins now, for example here where I've got that, I just want to tickle on that edge. Don't spread it because you will lose that um, that impact of that lovely light area against that shadow. So it's just about tickling with a soft brush to get that transition. And hopefully that is making sense I'm doing I'm quite pleased with that so to finish this I want to so we've got our three tones on there so you could always say right well that's pretty much done and it is but I always want to take it once you've got your three tones on there you want to go to your darker darks and your light lighter lights so that's what we're going to do now I'm going to take a little bit of alizarin crimson and I'm going to add a bit of black into that. Tiny amount. You've got to be careful that you don't kill the colour. But we've got a nice dark, I may even put a little purple in there just to keep that colour nice and warm. And I'm going to use that now just to scoop in a few extra darks in places. This is not about adding everywhere, but we can maybe scoot in. Constantly wipe the brush. You know, I can split, for example, here, I can split this and make it look like there's another little separation between those petals. I am also flattening this brush. I'm just going to jump you to the palette. I am flattening this brush, so I'm actually creating a bit of a chiseled edge on there, um, which is helping me kind of cut into what I'm doing. So right in that deep recess, maybe there's an extra dark in there. So don't add this everywhere. It's more about looking for a darker dark. Let's throw in a little bit more of that black. Where that petal is in its most recessed. It doesn't need a lot because that dark's nice and rich as it is. And I definitely, the further out you go, the less of this you will need. And then we want to do something similar with our lights. I am noticing a slight pinkish colour. So let's give that a, a go. I'm going to make a pink with our alizarin crimson and white. But then I'm also then going to pick up our cadmium red and marry those two colours so we're getting a slightly pinker and hopefully that makes sense as I've done it and I'll give that a little test I quite like that we could probably go a little towards the pink and maybe just edge a couple and again I don't want to overdo this few little marks that I'm not going to go back and blend to death. I'm going to go even pinkerer, pinkerer. I'm still relating it back to that cadmium. Now, if you have magenta on your palette, that might be a better option because it's got a nicer, bolder colour. Just a few little specks of that, I think. Don't want to overdo it. 
And then I'm also, we've got that lovely cool side. I'm gonna do the same with some warmer tones. We'll go with our cadmium orange and a little of our cadmium red. So it's a lot brighter by adding that cadmium orange. And again, just a few little areas now where there might, let's see if that's working. I'm gonna lighten that slightly with a tiny amount of our Naples yellow. And again, I don't want to overdo it. I like what I've got, so it's not about like over highlighting. And I'm not gonna blend these. I want those brush marks to really show. It's almost light within a light. And at that, I think I'm gonna call it a day because we can definitely over highlight, can't we? I'm stopping. I like my rose. I think it looks lovely. What do you think, Gary? I think it's wonderful. And I'm not sure, it might have been Carolyn who said it looks very, oh no, Jamie said it's very pure velvet. Yes, rose. it does. It looks very pretty. And again, with those um, final highlights, let me see if you can see it better. I've just kind of plonked them on, you know, don't over blend. Um, and that's important, I think, that you don't over blend things. Different, certain things need to be blended. For example, our um, candle needed to be nice and smooth. Now, I want to do a bit more work on that and then we can finish that off. So I'm going to go back to my filbert brush, nice soft brush. Let's get rid of the red. So you're getting lots of compliments. Thank you very much. Barbara says the more she watches, the more she learns every time. Oh, well that's um, good. Ed, Ed Boss says fantastic. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So I'm Hazel, going. Teacher's pet <laughs> says I love being part of this tribe. I know. So Hazel is in the process of working on our winter rose with me, and so is Joylin. I think Joylin's had a go. Carolyn, I'm not sure if she's had a go at the the pink winter rose that we're doing in the academy if you're interested in joining my academy um there will be a link in this underneath here um, we usually paint in on a wednesday um, but of course they go on replay if you can't make the wednesday workshops um, they are a nice place to come and learn these different techniques so what i'm doing now uh, actually i'm going to add the white first before i start detailing our wick I'm going to go straight in, I've got a nice clean brush and I'm going to go straight into our white. Of course it's not going to be white because it's going to mix with the colour underneath but I want that slightly thicker now, brighter. That's why we didn't want it to be brilliantly bright um, too early on because you want to be able to go back and put these thicker tones on. So this is just pure titanium white. And I'm putting this on relatively thick now. We've got all that lovely under color. And again, all I wanna do is just tickle that in to what's underneath. Now at this point, we've got, all, we've got that lovely smooth base, but at this point I do not want to necessarily smooth out my brush marks. I'm quite happy, hopefully you can see them on there, quite happy for some of those to peek through. Let's stay with the white for now. I am gonna dance a few other colors in there. Just looking where I can see this thicker color. Getting a little bit of texture in there as well. Bringing that down. And this time, can you see the crisscross strokes I'm doing? So I'm kind of blending, but with a crisscross. So I've got some of that lovely texture. You can always use your finger if you want to just soften that in. But I quite like that. Now I'm going to pick up a little cadmium orange, uh, sorry, cadmium yellow. 
hardly any on the brush it's quite a strong color so I'm going to wipe that excess and I'm just going to bring some of that lovely glow back again so I'm just finishing this off really where we left it give that a wipe let's go into our cadmium orange pure color at this point but very little I'm tinting what's underneath And I can see that lovely, almost reflective light there. So a bit of that bright orange, giving you that nice edge. We can bring that all the way down. Looks pretty, doesn't it? Let's bring some of that in. I'm going to go into titanium white and a tiny amount of that ultramarine blue to make a very pale blue because I really want to bring some of this slightly cooled colour to the bottom that I felt like I'm not quite getting. I'm wiping constantly before reloading. And again, I'll just soften that in. Use your finger as well. I quite like that slightly cooler edge right at that bottom. I'm going to use the mop. There is also kind of a darkish grey and then a shadow, so pick up some of whatever's on my palette now, a darkish grey tone, and I want to just give this candle a little bit of an edge right at the bottom. As the candle's kind of turning away from the light there. Kind of just neatening everything up a little. That looks good. And then I will finish that with a nice dark, so ultramarine bloom burnt umber. Staying in this puddle as well. And I'll just strengthen that lovely shadow right underneath. And again, this is all about neatening anything up at this stage. That doesn't look bad. Okay, so on to the candle. onto the flame even, I should say. So we've already got our orange and red there. I'm going to enhance those a little bit. So back to our cadmium red, very little on the brush. And at this point now I can just create, I'm almost coming to the edge of where I was before to get a little bit of a fuzzy glow to that. I'm going to tap that as well where that green is. Things like this would be easier if you were doing them as a, um, you know, once it was dry. But obviously we're working wet into wet. So I'm back to cadmium red. I'm going to get the start of the wick in here. I'm wiping, cleaning cadmium orange next.
and then into burnt umber. So I've put my lights in first before putting my darks in. And that's just going to make it easier than trying to paint around. I keep that lovely pure colour. And I'm going to kind of squeeze that a little in between. So hopefully that makes sense as I've done it. Now sometimes, you're not seeing it on this reference, but sometimes you get a little bit of blue. Should I give it a go and see if I can try and create it? Mm, I can see it being a mess. Let's leave that. I'm going to stick with the reference, I think. Right, I've got a little bit of cadmium yellow now. Again, this is pure colour. And I'm going to work that just inside of where we've just put our orange and our red. So it takes those three, and I am tapping this on, so it's going on pretty thick. Go back to my orange. Again, there's a blob on there. Hopefully you can see that. I'm not, you know, it is going on quite thick now at this point as we work that bright glow. And then give the brush a clean and we're going to go into very thick titanium white. A nice blob on there. Is that a technical term? A, a nice blob. blob on there? A nice blob on there, yeah. And that is really thick. When that's dry, there will be some texture. Get the middle bit in first, and then you can very lightly kind of dance that into that yellow. But don't blend, because you'll lose the impact of that. Doesn't that look pretty? Mm. I'm going to take just a tiny amount of that burnt umber again, and just hint at something in here. Going like so. I like that. Huh. It's always a pleasure, you know, when I've done something, I think, oh, I quite like that. That works. This works really nicely. <laughs> I've not painted it, so <laughs> you never know. These things could go disaster, and they do sometimes go disastrously wrong. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> I think that looks, Hazel's saying, wow, what stunning. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph, um, but I'm really, really happy with how that has turned out. What do you think, Gary? Are we happy it's, with that? I, I love it. Th that candle. Um, it looks really nice. It's, it's very, amazing, very yeah. thick. Let me see if I can just zoom in and show you the thickness of that paint. Let me move things up. Hopefully you can see it from there, how actual thick that final glow has gone on. Um, it doesn't, if you don't put it on thick like that, you won't get the glow. So um, you do need to, to put your highlights on pretty thick. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to um, sign that off, I think, and call that a done painting. Yes, right. So where are we at with everything? Um, everybody's really Everybody's happy. had a good They're time all... and we've, we've enjoyed it. And I've enjoyed it. And you've actually took my mind off. Um, having this rotten cold and feeling best I've felt all week. So uh, I appreciate that. But yeah, I'm pleased with that. What do you reckon, Gary? We all good with that? Yeah, it's wonderful. And um, everybody thinks so. She, she and Marie is saying this is beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And again, everything is available on the Academy. Everything's for free. I've provided you tracing. There is, there is already an underpainting out there already. Do your underpainting first, let that dry, and then come and do this colour layer. And I shall look forward to seeing your versions. I have the Mazart Tribe. If you search for Mazart on... Um, 
Facebook, um, you'll find the tribe on there. Um, that's a free membership for people to join in. It is for people just to share Maz art projects because obviously I don't want it inundating with tons of different art. Um, but if you want to share your version with me, that's the place to do that. Um, and of course, if you want more lessons from me, please do consider joining the Maz art Academy. It's kind of like Patreon, only we're just way better organization. Um, but you can come and go it's a monthly subscription or alternatively um, you can actually <laughs> buy month. yeah you can actually buy classes one at a time as well um, so it's uh, there are options on there you can buy one at a time or join and access everything um, so that's how it all works so I'm gonna finish there I'm absolutely desperate for a cup of tea we've done one hour 57 minutes which I think is absolutely fabulous um, and I'm really pleased with my lovely romantic oh you like it Gary it's for you so <laughs> it's happy um, uh, happy Valentine's dear <laughs> I, I, I feel really emotional <laughs> wonderful I hope your version turns out as nice and you're as pleased with it but that's it from me Dean is saying too busy to chat as I painted along wow well done oh I look forward to seeing your version over on the tribe Dean is so um and that should be be fun looking forward to the next one on the academy as well yes we've got a wonderful ram coming up and we've got a landscape as well in acrylics so uh, lots of variety on there if that's what you're interested in then do consider joining the amazing mazar academy even though i say so myself <laughs> right on that note i'm going to go and grab myself a cup of tea and i'll see some of you on Wednesday for the second part of our Pink Rose tutorial and I'll look forward to seeing some of you in the next video. Bye bye for now guys, bye bye.